congratulations for your documentary. Is there anybody out there? Thank you so much. I am so, so, so excited that people are going to see it. I know. More of a congratulations is that it's being showcased at the Sundance Film Festival, one of the most prestigious film festivals in the world. How do you feel about that? I still can't believe it. It is, it is, yeah, stuff dreams are made of. It's my wildest dream. It's what I always wanted for the film, and I, I can't believe it's really happening. <laughs> Thrilled. That is terrific. That is terrific. Are you going to be there in person um, yourself for your own premiere? Yes, yes, I can't wait. <laughs> Absolutely. So let, let's ask that uh, obligatory question that we always um, ask is, uh, what sparked you to do this documentary in the first place? Uh, what sparked me to do this documentary is, was really just um, my passion for humanizing disabled people. Um, I felt, I feel like there is such a need for more visibility for the disabled community. Um, and yeah, that, that was absolutely always the driving force. But I, I suppose I realized I had a story to tell. Um, and initially it was very much about, I was really interested in the experience of existing in an unusual looking body. Um, or with a very rare condition and feeling alienated but it wasn't until I became pregnant that it became a very personal film <laughs> in 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 the case of for for this film do you how how did you feel that you know to make yourself as basically the center the, the subject of the film I mean that that must have been a pretty difficult decision in the first place Yes, I do think I am mad. Um, it was, yeah, it, it's the most exposing film, I feel, in, in many ways. Um, but I just kept focusing on how important I feel my, my message is and what I'm trying to say. And I felt that the best kind of way to spread my message was through my story. Um, so, yeah, it... I, it it feels like an exposing film and um, it's scary as well. Like I'm sure I'm going to have some criticism and some backlash. It's not, not controversial. There are controversial elements to the film. And um, so yes, scary, but felt like the right thing. And I love the film. So. One one of the um, greatest things about your film is that uh, you kept a video diary um, for quite some time. When when did you start um, your video diaries, and when did you decide to take the portions of your video diaries into this film? I started the video diaries the day that I found out I was pregnant. I knew I was going to video diary. I knew that that was going to be if not an element of the film, just a way to kind of, yeah, uh, remind myself of what had been going on in my life um, for the period of making the film. But yes, the first video diary I did was after I had done a pregnancy test. Um, and I really, I really got into it in the end. Like after we'd finished the film, I, every day I felt like, oh God, there's something I really need to do. And then I'd remember, no, you don't have to video diary today. And I was so relieved um because <laughs> I got very sick of it but yes that the editing process was mad especially in the early days when we were like whittling down the, the video diaries and deciding what was important um yeah I definitely got sick of myself that's for sure <laughs> I can't imagine um the editing process that you have to uh listen and watch yourself over and over again in this case yeah yeah, no, I, I got really used to it, though. I, I Yeah, I got used to seeing myself. I did. Yeah, I got to a point that I was able to see myself objectively and just think about myself as a character, which is crazy. I never thought I'd get there, but I did. So at did, did you realize at which point uh, during your video diaries that you were narrating yourself? Um. Sorry, can you repeat the question? I said at which point um, during your video diaries that you realize that you are narrating, you know, your your story. 
Yeah, I don't really know. Um, I don't really know the answer to that question because I suppose I knew it was always, I always knew it was a possibility that I would be narrating my story, but I also always thought that they might hit the cutting room floor and not make the film at all. I didn't realise that they were going to be so fundamental in the film. But also I think... I still feel a bit conflicted about having used them because I know that all Anne-Marie Lean Verco, my cinematographer, I know all her footage, so cinematic and beautiful. And then the video diaries are just, you know, like portrait, portrait me, my face, wherever I am at the time. Um, so, yeah, I know it doesn't look as beautiful, but it, I think the authenticity kind of won out in the end and they just, yeah, they became a really good tool. So what, when did you bring in your cinematographer in this case? Um, it was, obviously it was probably what, after the birth, most definitely. After the birth? No, no, when you, when did you bring the cinematographer for, for your film? Because, uh, because uh, you started with the video diaries. I, I did start with the video video diaries. I can't I can't remember exactly when she was on board, but I, I was I was pregnant at the time and I had yeah, I'd got some yeah, funding from the BFI Doc Society and I'd found my producer, Janine Marmot. Um and I think she we wanted to find someone local. So she found Anne Marie. Um and we met for a coffee and really clicked and yeah I was pregnant and Anne Marie was a mum as well and I just found her really warm and yes turned out that she's like you know she's very experienced but she's also yeah just so talented so intuitive and just I never I I got to the point that I barely noticed she was there when she was there filming me it was amazing I feel so lucky to have had her on board now after the pregnancy the um, it seems like there was a could be a shift um, towards in your film. Why was it important to be looking for that someone out there that is like you? <clears throat> I really wanted to find someone with a shared experience in the world, and I think there was there was a, a period in time when I was pregnant, when I thought, I wonder if the end of the film will be that I've found myself, I found my soulmate in River. But when he was born, even though I completely loved him, obviously, um, I still I, I still felt the same. I still felt that, like there was something missing. I still felt like, um, yeah, like I had never met anyone who really understood what it was like to be me. But of course, is that even possible? Would I ever in any universe find find meet someone who knows what it's like to be me? I don't know. I don't know, maybe. But um, yeah, that's that's I that's what the film became about for a bit, and what my journey became about was wanting to find someone exactly like me because I have always felt so alienated. Don't 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 you find the idea that uh it's rather to be unique than to be similar to everyone else? That, sorry, can you repeat that? Isn't isn't it rather be? Shouldn't you rather be unique than to be to find someone who is exactly the same as you? Well, I like being unusual, um, and I am proud to be unusual. And I've always been proud to be disabled. And I've never hated my body, despite being told by society that I'm, you know, like it, not even human. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think it's also to do with being an only child and various other things. I've always felt alone, I guess, to be honest. And yeah, it was it was very much about finding. Uh, yeah, I, I just became very fixated on finding someone who would fill that hole. Yeah. So so in the end, was your journey satisfying? Yes, it was satisfied, but um, unsurprisingly, not in the way that I wanted it to be. Of course, I'm not going to find someone who knows exactly what it's like to be me. Um, but it was a combination of things that came together, having my son, um, kind of exploring my relationship with one of my best friends deeply through the film, 
and yeah traveling to meet these people with the same medical condition as me it was a, it was a combination um and yeah I don't yeah I, I feel like I did completely achieve what I set out to but in a way that I didn't expect during you during this journey what was the most surprising thing that you learned about other people that you found The most surprising thing about the other people that I found, hmm, I think, um, I think I was I was quite surprised at how differently we all viewed disability. I thought, perhaps naively, I'd imagined that we would all be kind of politicised in the same sort of way. And it's so funny talking about it now because why on earth would we? be so very similar I did connect have like a fundamental deep connection I think to all the people that I met but yeah we were all very different I think that was just the biggest surprise that we were all very very different from one another even though we did have this shared experience which is looking very unusual yeah was it difficult for you to convince your subjects to be part of your documentary for you know for a lot of these interviews? Um, so the people that appear in the film, no, it wasn't that difficult. And I feel really lucky that they all said yes. And they're such amazing contributors and just amazing people who I hope to be in touch with forever. Um, but there was, pe people don't know this yet, but there was someone who I really wanted to meet. Um, it's actually an, an amazing story. I won't tell it all, but but basically that I found out that there was this woman whose photo I had had since I was a child and I tracked her down. So it was like this woman's image in my head all these years that I've been searching and existing. Um, and I tracked her down and it looked like she was happy for us to go and meet her. And then she changed her mind at the last minute. So like I booked the flights and everything. And then she sort of ghosted me. Um, so that was at the time was just heartbreaking because I was when I was in this Ed space, I was convinced that she was the one that was going to solve all. <laughs> I thought that she was going to be my soulmate. Um, and then she just disappeared. So that was hard. So so did you ever find out what happened or she still ghosted you? At the, to the um, we're still friends on Facebook, but she will not reply to my messages. And I think it's probably time that I stopped harassing her now because, you know, <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I don't know what happened. I don't know why she went off the idea, but I think it probably made, it did probably make the film stronger because it was, yeah, it was another little reminder, like you're never going to find someone exactly like you. <laughs> No, you, you you should be uh, you should be unique is is my opinion, but uh, absolutely. But I it, it it is it is it is funny that you included your parents um, into your documentary and interviewed them. Was uh was that an e were, were those easy interviews or was it kind of awkward to try to bring your your uh, parents into uh, this story? Yes, I'm really grateful for my parents' participation. I think they're, yeah, just such an amazing part of the film. Um, and they're both so honest in the interviews. I, I was really impressed when I interviewed them. I thought, you're, yeah, you're being so kind of brave and open. Um, it wasn't awkward. I'm, I'm, I'm very close to them both. Um, but it wasn't easy either. It was, you know, I was asking difficult questions. Some of them, some questions I had never asked before. Um, and I was, yeah, I was definitely, I don't mince my words and I don't mess around. I don't do small talk. So I was asking quite hard hitting questions. Um, but luckily they were both really receptive to that and also supportive of the film. So they threw themselves in. Oh, you've got a cat. <laughs> I do as well. What's What colour is your cat? I didn't uh, see, I just saw the tail. Fun. With blonde. Blonde cat, lovely. <laughs> <laughs> now, um, were, were you always, you know, in a, a filmmaker yourself, or this is uh, just something that, uh, when, when did you decide to become that filmmaker? I've pretty much always wanted to be a filmmaker. Um, film is my, is my life and my favorite thing. Um, I think, can you hear the storm in the background, by the way? There's a cat again. Is it? Yeah, crazy storm. I hope you can't hear it. But anyway, um, yes, 
pretty much always wanted to be a filmmaker. Um, when I graduated from college, which is not the same in the UK, but when I left sixth form, so I was like 18 and whatever, my friends went to university and I didn't do that. I did some traveling and some silly jobs, like some jobs that I did not enjoy. Um, but I still just really wanted to be a filmmaker. And so in the end, I went to art school and studied film production. And yes, since then have made a few short films. And this is my first feature. Um, yeah. Now, after after getting this under under the belt, do you, do you feel like, you know, you, you want to do more in this uh, type of genre, more documentaries? Um, yeah, I do. Sorry, your cats are so funny. Is it just one cat? I'm so confused. I, I, it's just one cat. The, the other cat doesn't zoom bomb. <laughs> oh, it's just she's just walking around and around and around. Yeah. Um, yes, I would love to do more documentaries, particularly, um, particularly about related to disability um but also fiction is a massive passion for me I love writing my next big project is a historical drama which I'm about to start writing the script for um about the life of a court dwarf so everything I ever make will probably be somewhat related to disability will have central disabled characters um just because that's my experience what I'm passionate about and what I find interesting but um Yes, I'm sure I will make more documentaries. I love both. Most excellent. Well, I, I do have uh, one one more major question that I have to ask is because uh, the the magic word that you keep on using through your uh, documentary is ableism. And um, for uh, for a person like myself who's non-disabled, it's, it's not a it's not a word in our vocabulary because you know we're we're not disabled. Uh, tell tell us about uh, you know, ableism and um, why that was so prominent um, throughout the entire film. Yeah, um, yeah, ableism f for me just means, well, ableism is discrimination against disabled people. Um, and for disabled people, our lives are pretty much governed by ableism, like access is um, such a huge issue and my film is predominantly about attitudes and attitudes towards disabled people are generally speaking so completely uh, at the opposite end of the spectrum than they should be. Um, so, yeah, I feel like ableism is kind of all I know and that, that sounds really bleak and I don't really mean it because I also no joy and community and the other lovely celebratory things that the film is about um but i can't imagine existing in a world that's not ableist um and i think i think that's yeah that's kind of what i'm trying to communicate is that it's all societal like the the social model of disability talks about being disabled by society rather than your condition so rather than thinking oh poor you it must be so hard to be in a wheelchair think poor you it must be so hard to have to be fighting against a ableist society and lack of access every day you know that's how I see ableism like I, I absolutely wouldn't change myself for the world I've always felt that way and um, I just want society to change that so that disabled people have equality Absolutely, absolutely. Well, let, let me uh, leave with one one last thought, one last question. And uh, as your film going to be seen at Sundance and hopefully more people right after the film festival, what is the one most important lesson that you hope that uh, people would walk away with after viewing your film? I think the most important lesson would be that disability isn't a tragedy. I think that's that's probably the most important lesson, yeah, which is very general and also very broad, but actually very profound. If people could not see disability as a tragedy, then we'd live in a really different world and existing as a disabled person would be a very different experience. 
Most excellent. Well, Ella, thank you very much uh, for this deep conversation about your film. Um, and uh, hey, congratulations once again for your uh, documentary. Is there anybody out there? And and thank you for speaking to us. Thank you so much. It's lovely to meet you. Hey, thank you. Bye now.